motion capture using only video. Good morning! In this video, you're going to learn the complete workflow from shooting a video with either a web camera or your smartphone, then take that footage into a professional software like iClone 8, and using the new video mocap plugin with technology powered by QuickMagic. We're going to track the footage and convert it into high quality motion capture. Not only am I going to show you the best practices for getting the best quality track when you're shooting the video, I'm also going to show you some really extreme examples of how you can process even the most difficult shots. At the end, I'm going to share a very brief short film I did using all of this that you have now learned in this video. I've also marked everything with timestamps and chapters down below if you want to skip to a specific part. So if you're ready to learn motion capture in the most easiest form, let's get started. All right, so first things first, let's set up the camera. I'm using the AppSpot Me 2 webcam, but honestly, you can use any camera that can connect to your PC or even your phone for that matter. The reason I like this one is because it's small and it has a quarter inch mount, so I can screw it right onto a Gorillapod or any small tripod. Once that's set, just plug it into your computer and start recording with OBS Studio, which is completely free. Before we can start recording, it is important to record good quality footage that the AI plugin can track accurately. First, angles from below are not good. Angles from above are not good either. The ideal angle is from chest height or head height, where the body is clearly visible and not distorted. Avoid handheld or shaky footage and try not to have motion blur. The cleaner and more stable the video is, the better the tracking result will be. Do not wear loose fitting clothing that hides or distorts the shape of your body. The plugin needs to see your full movement clearly. Also avoid one colored clothes, especially if they blend into the background. You should also make sure you have enough space to walk or move around so your feet or arms are not cut off by the frame. The framing should be technically good, not aesthetically good. Once everything looks correct, you can start recording your takes. Remember you have up to 60 seconds per clip. Alright, now that we've got our footage recorded, it's time to track and process it. Before we begin, you're going to need something called DA points. You can see your current balance right up here in the top right corner of the app. So let's click that. That will take you straight to Reillusion's website where you can buy points. The smallest pack you can get is 1000 DA points, which equals $10. Each clip you process costs 250 points, or about $2.5 per clip. So it's not completely free, but it is still much cheaper than buying a motion suit or an optical setup. Once you have your points ready, we can move on to processing the footage. Now let's open the video mocap plugin. You can find it in the toolbar or from the menu inside iClone. Here you can see your current DA points balance. Let us open a video file to start with. Next click detect actors. The plugin will automatically find all the humans in the video. You can only process one actor at a time but you can reuse the same footage for multiple trackers if you need more characters. Down here, you can trim the clip if you want. However, it always costs 250 points to process a clip, no matter how long it is. So I recommend using the full 60 seconds to get the best value. You can also switch between full body or upper body mode. This is useful if the feet are cut off in your video frame, which I will show later. Once the edit is complete, the status will change to trimmed. Now let us add one more video, but this time do not make any changes. It will show as unprocessed, but both clips will still be ready for tracking. You can also choose to show the reference video as a viewport background or as a plane placed behind the character. When everything looks ready, click Generate Motion to start processing. This takes a few minutes, but once it's done, it changes to applicable. Click Apply Motion to apply the generated animation to the selected character. You'll notice that the plugin gets some things wrong, but also some things really well. The hip movement is drifting a little, but that's an easy fix. The same goes for the hand position resting on the thighs, just small adjustments needed. Just look at the foot contact and the room awareness, those parts are surprisingly accurate. Let's try another clip, select the actor, trim the clip and process it again. The 
this one also turned out really well with just some small adjustments needed. The tracker does an extremely good job at uh, guessing what's happening with the hands when it can't see them with very little jittering. Let's go through the rest of the clips I shot of myself and Amelia, the waiter. My own key takeaways from my own captures is that the tracker struggles when body parts are overexposed by the sun or underexposed by shadows. I should have avoided motion blur by setting the shutter speed myself as I think it was too low in these videos. Overall though, I think most of it turned out really well. We can use a combination of the motion modifier, motion layer and reach target to clean up the data from the capture. Now it's time to make the motion perfect. Let us jump over to our scene in Unreal. Let's export the props I interact with, like the chair and the pizza. You can use either an FBX export or the send to iClone feature. Next, I will quickly fix the shoulders using the motion modifier. This helps correct posture in just a few seconds. Then I use the motion layer to fine tune the joint positions and hand gestures. I will go deeper into this part later when we reach the more complex shots. Now I enable the reach target system for the hands. This is an amazing feature that lets the hands stay perfectly locked to objects. And here is a before and after. Just a few quick tweaks that took less than a few minutes, but made a huge difference. The motion editing tools in iClone really are super easy to use to perfect the motion you captured. So let's continue with some stock footage that will challenge us a bit. These next clips does not follow the recommended video guides, so let's see how they turn out. In this next clip, the actor is throwing a frisbee. In some clips, the feet or legs might be outside of the frame. In those cases, we can lock the hip movement. So select upper body and then click generate motion. When we apply the motion, you can see that the lower half of the body stays locked in place while the upper body captures the movement really well. Now let us give the lower body a more natural pose to match the rest of the motion. You can also use the puppet tool to add some dynamic movement to the hip bone. And finally, let us export the pizza prop and animate it in iClone so it syncs perfectly with the character motion. Now let us look at how to work with really difficult clips, especially those that were not recorded by you. Here is a tricky example. Right away I can tell this will be challenging. The clip has motion blur and the actor is jumping off the ground. Not only that, he does a backflip away from the camera. So there are many elements that are not recommended for tracking. Let us try processing it anyway. It actually captured the first jump towards the camera surprisingly well, better than I expected. However, the middle part where he does the flip completely freaks out. So let's quickly fix it using the motion editing tools. Start by splitting the clip to mark the in and out points where the motion breaks. Next, sample all keyframes, then remove them. Using the motion layer, manually move the character into an upside down flip position. Turn on the new motion trail function so we can see the position of the hip over time directly in the viewport. Add a keyframe at the start of the clip and move the hip to where it was at the end of the previous clip. Let's move him up in the air and we can use the motion trail to visualize the curve. Then move toward the end of the clip and complete the flip using the reference video as a guide. Next, go to the last clip and move the hip again so it lines up with the end of the previous motion. That way the character is actually moving back in 3D space. Finally, flatten all layers and blend them together for a seamless transition. Change the transition type to easy in and easy out for smooth motion between the clips. Let's merge them and then move on. So I'm going to speed through these last adjustments here. 
But basically what I'm doing is looking at the reference video and then adding keyframes, which I felt were missing. It's so easy to do quick adjustments with the motion tools in iClone. I have animated in Blender, Maya and Unreal Engine. And honestly, iClone is by far the easiest, quickest and most fun, in my opinion. You can also use the motion correction tool to quickly fix any foot sliding left over in the motion. When you're happy with the results, we can go ahead and save the motion as a RL motion clip in the content browser. Let's save it under animation, then motion. When it's saved in the content browser, it will bake down all keyframes and constraints so we can reuse it on a different character. Let's quickly give it a try with Emilia, the waiter. She can now do a backflip. Nice. The final video in my demo is a ballerina dancer performing a jump. This one is especially difficult. She jumps high off the ground and she's wearing a white dress against a white background. We cannot clearly see all the body parts and her right arm is covered by the dress through most of the shot. When she jumps up in the air, the tracking completely breaks down. I will not go into full detail on this one to repeat the same thing, but we will use the same kind of adjustments as we did for the guy doing the backflip, motion layer, motion correction, and reach targets. So once again, you can visualize the hip position with the motion trail. So let's create a smooth curve when she's flying through the air. The more time you spend on motion editing, the better it will be, obviously, but you can get great results with very little effort. After some light editing, it already looks a lot better. Here is a before and after comparison. Let's see how these animations work on different characters with other proportions. If you're smart, unlike me, you would have used the correct character from the start. So the reach targets works for the character you are planning on using. But I hadn't finished my character yet, so I'll have to retarget instead. Fortunately, it's very easy to one-click send the character from CC5 and replace the character in iClone, keeping all constraints and motion editing you've already done. But yeah, like you can see here, the hand doesn't reach the chair anymore, so we'll need to go in and adjust it again using reach targets. Same thing with hands, not reaching the thighs anymore. So when I'm done, I'm going to replace the save motion with the one adjusted for Michael. Now let us place all clips in chronological order. I like to space them with 1000 frame increments between each clip. That gives plenty of room for adjustments later. Use flags in iClone timeline for easy clip sorting. It helps keep track of where each scene begins and ends. We're done with the animation and video mocap plugin, so next I'll show you my preferred way of transferring the motion to Unreal Engine. In my UE project, I'm going to create a folder called RL Content, and it's very important this name is exactly this, so the plugin can find the correct path. Now let us drag and drop the CC5 character into Unreal Engine 5. Import it using the normal settings, but make sure to uncheck Use Time Zero that small change gives a massive speed boost during import. Here I have done the same process with the waiter character. Both characters are now imported into the RL content folder. Before sending everything to Unreal, we first need to send only the props that the character interacts with. Open the UP5 plugin. In the plugin settings, uncheck place asset in scene then uncheck everything except the specific props you need, in my example, that is the chair. Once the prop is transferred to Unreal Engine 5, we can then transfer both the character motion and the prop motion together. Doing it this way keeps the exact world positions from iClone to Unreal. That means you do not need to worry about realigning anything once inside Unreal. After the transfer is complete, open the new RL Level Sequences folder. Here you can view all the combined motions for both the character and the prop. Now it is time to assemble everything inside Unreal Engine 5. First I will move the recorded sequence into my Clips folder. 
Then I rename it to scene one, Michael, clip one, version one. Do the same for all other clips, just like shown here. Next, I have created an animation sequence for this scene where we will assemble all the animation clips together. I will start by adding them in chronological order. Once that is done, I rename the track to Michael. Then I repeat the same process for Emilia, the waiter. Now I move each character into position with a small offset, just to line up the motion correctly. I didn't take the table into consideration when recording the motion, so I will adjust the character's position using the CC control rig. And that is it. The animation is now assembled and ready for the final touches. All right, that was a lot of information to take in. But the main takeaway is that the video motion plugin is super easy to use. There's not a lot of things that could go wrong unless you do like backflips like I showed you here. It's especially perfect for creating very quick uh, background characters or like generic motions that you can reuse over and over again. So hopefully you learned something from all of this. Down in the video description, you can find links to where you can get the plugin. The plugin itself is free, but you need credits to generate motion. But it's a very nice way to getting into motion capture without fully committing to a suit or like an optical system. Now it's nothing else left but to show you the short film I did. So hopefully you want to stick around for that as well. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye. Hmm, a pizza would be nice. Ah, yes. Okay, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. You ready to order? Yes. I would like one frisbee. Ah. And then a backflip. Yes. And of then course. a um, ballerina as well. Mm, good choice. Thank you. I'll be right back. Mm, very good. Do you want to see something cool? Uh, sure. What the?